everyone. Welcome to the second episode of Solve It Burke's Kids. I am your host, Kayla, and today we are going to be exploring the career of an equine veterinarian, Dr. Megan Hayes. Welcome, Megan. Thanks for being here today. Thank you so much for having me. I'll just kind of talk through the presentation and a day in the life. Now, let's get up to speed with what it means to be an equine veterinarian. That's two words we need to talk about this morning. Equine means horse, but where does that come from? Equus is the Latin word for horse. Latin is a language that no one speaks anymore, and although no one speaks it, you can hear a lot of Latin mixed in with languages that are spoken around the world today. For example, the English word equine. What about veterinarian? Veterinarian is a person who can medically treat animals, an animal doctor. So Megan is a horse doctor. So Megan, what does your day look like? The best thing in my opinion about being an equine veterinarian is that it's kind of hard to think of what a day in the life of an equine veterinarian is because every day is different. We have such a variety of appointments, so I'm going to kind of walk you through some of the most common appointments that we do, just so you can get a good idea. Before we get started, let's take a brainstorm break. Kids, I want you to think about all the doctors that you have to go see to stay healthy. Ask your teachers to pause this video and make a list with your class. Great! Now that you have your list, let's see what types of doctors the horses see. Just like you and I go to the doctor for physicals and annual blood work, horses have that too. At least yearly, we'll do a physical exam. That's me in the middle picture listening to the horse's heart. Other things we do are vaccine, routine blood work, and then just kind of give the horse a once over. Is it healthy? How do its teeth look? Is it able to eat and digest its food? Can it see well? Um, everything to make sure that it's healthy. This is like a well visit to your doctor. They make sure everything in your body is healthy and they make sure you're up to date on your shots so that you can stay healthy. Now what about those pearly whites? How do horses keep their teeth clean? Dentistry is a huge thing in horses. It's kind of my little specialty here in our practice. I'm the only one who does dentistry here. I know horses get really sharp teeth due to their chewing patterns. What do you do about that? So we have to float or file those sharp points one to two times a year, depending on the horse. Uh, the flip side of that is seeing horses with um, dental problems, infected teeth, fractured teeth, and then addressing those problems and extracting the teeth surgically. But that, it's a really fun, um, a fun part of equine medicine, and it's a very important part of equine medicine. Do horses ever go to the emergency room? We might have a normal... Like my day will have a full list of appointments and the scheduled order of go, uh, but you always have to be ready for that phone call of, unfortunately, this horse up top broke its leg. That's an x-ray of a broken leg. Swollen eyes, fevers, um, anything you can think of, those are uh, daily emergencies for us. So we'll have to kind of fit those into our day as we see fit. You know, really intensive cases or life-threatening, then they'll come into our hospital. What do you spend most of your time doing? A bulk of what we do is sports medicine. Um, like I said, most of these guys, they're athletes. Um, they also are pretty fragile. Um, so they, they, they break quite often. Um, and the hard part is they can't tell us um, what is wrong with them. So we identify which leg is the lame leg. And then once we have the leg identified, so we'll watch a horse jog, um, like the horse in the left picture, um, so that we can identify which leg or sometimes legs, multiple legs, that they are lame in or limping on is what I mean when I say that. Um, and then we'll kind of put them through a variety of different tests so that we can help determine what part of their leg um, is hurting them. And what do you do once you've identified the injured area? So some of those injuries may lead to surgery, emergency surgeries, elective surgeries, abdominal surgeries, um, you know, joint surgeries. Those are all, all things that happen for horses too. What does the road to recovery look like for a horse? So all of these horses that we see for injuries, or maybe they're just 
coming back from a big abdominal surgery um, and they need to be very carefully monitored and put back into um, the physical therapy program, much like when humans have injuries, it, it, it's impossible to tell the horse, um, you know, flex this leg three times a day or, you know, balance, work on your balance. Um, so we do that for them at this rehabilitation center, and we have lots of cool toys um, to do that with. This is just more pictures of our rehabilitation center. We have a regular treadmill. The horse on the left is working on his balance. Um, seems like a simple exercise for sure, but it definitely helps them, um, you know, figure, helps their brain figure out where their feet are and how to balance their um, large muscle mass. Most of these horses are anywhere between 1,200 and 1,500 pounds. What does one of your biggest challenges look like? Something for you guys to think about um, that certainly scientists and technologists are working on all the time for the equine world is the, the big challenge of their size. If you think about when you are injured, you're most likely told to go home, you break your leg, you rest, you don't walk on it, you get a cast on. Um, our horses, they're only designed to to sleep or to be laying down for a maximum of one hour a day. So it becomes really challenging trying to treat these injuries. The obvious answer is to keep a horse in a sling, like the picture on the right. Um, so that horse, basically the sling hoists him up a little bit. So he's only weight bearing a, a certain percentage of his weight. Um, but of course that has its own complications um, when you weigh uh, three quarters of a ton. Um, the horses don't really handle that very well because they get sores, pressure sores, very quickly um, from those straps. So that seems like a good option, but it is challenging because it's not actually quite as practical of an option. So size, I think, is our biggest challenge. So that, I think, is something good to think about. This gave our audience a lot to think about, which means it's time for our equine veterinarian activity. Kids, I want you to imagine that you have unlimited access to anything in the world. I want you to design a product that helps horses recover from injuries that make standing difficult. As a bonus activity, look for materials around your classroom and home to create a 3D model of your invention. Send those inventions to kallenbach at albright.edu so that you and your class can be featured on our Facebook page. Thank you, Megan, for sharing your insight on a day in the life of an equine veterinarian. You're welcome, thank you. Don't forget, kids, it doesn't matter how old you are, you are never too young to come up with an idea that can change the world. Believe in yourself, because I believe in you. That's all for now. See you next time on Solve It Burke's Kids.